This episode, I'm going to talk about more Borg. Describing itself as a doom metal album of a game, a spiked flail to the face, light on rules, heavy on everything else. It is a fantastic game, it's won loads of awards, there's loads of YouTube videos out there that will tell you how great it is. One of my favourite things about it is its open gaming licence. So what I'm going to do is rather than talk about this game, I'm going to talk about that. The Mortborg gaming licence basically allows people to produce anything they like for Mortborg. So we have the cross stitch. It's an adventure that you can play with Mortborg. We've got the Black Fortress of Nobunaga. This is a complete game that uses the Mortborg system. There's Fort Borg, the guide to food for Mortborg. And then there's the Masticator's Gate. The Masticator Gate is a whole campaign for Mortborg. Now, none of these are produced by Free League, who are the creators of Mortborg, but they're all licensed, they're all sold through like Drive Through RPG, and basically anyone anywhere who wants to create a Mortborg product can. So there's some really awesome stuff out there. So what I'm going to do in this video is take a look at five products that I think just show off how good this gaming license is. And that's not to say these are the five greatest Mortborg products. They I mean, they might be, you might like them the most. I do like them, but there's, there's other products out there that are amazing as well. And these aren't even the official Mortborg products, which are also great. But what they do think they do is they're a really good snapshot of just the, just the tremendous ability that is out there and the amazing things that people produce. So please join me as we take a look at five Mortborg products. The first one I look at is also the smallest. It's literally just, a single sheet and it's not even an A4 sheet at that uh, so it must be A5 and I think it must be the smallest role play product I actually own it's really straightforward you've got the character class on one side which is the pallid jailer and you've got some abilities you've got some plot hooks <laughs> typical Mortborg you actually really have to work to actually understand what the font says for the name <laughs> and then over on the other side there's a little adventure hook and then there's a big bad evil guy who ties in with the jailer as well. It's a really tidy little expansion and I've seen quite a few like this on itch.io. Uh, so that's itch, I-T-C-H dot I-O. Um, I don't really understand the ins and outs of it because I'm now a very middle-aged man. But my understanding is basically people kind of, they have a theme and then people submit pieces around that theme. So you get a lot of variety from them. This is Fork Borg. This is it's basically an expansion all about food. So let's take a look inside this. It's fairly new, this one. It arrived uh, a couple of weeks ago. So straight away, we've got a table that helps you generate food for your character's rations. Your characters get rations in Mortborg, so many days rations. This just gives you an idea of them. And it's just instant theme for your characters. So, you know, you've got a sack of rotten apples. You've got a jar of dry kernels with moths breeding inside. If, if you're really lucky and you get a six and then something, you might even have real food. Uh, it's, it's a really, really neat little addition just to add some theme to your character straight from the off. You've then got the Psalms here. These are the Psalms of Famine. So in what Borg, I'm sure you know this if you listen to this podcast, but... Um, psalms are generated every every so often when you get seven psalms the world ends and this is the same thing here except these are all themed along the lines of food which is really cool so here we've got the four humors so you've got phlegm sanguine yellow bile now that's college yellow bile and this one is black bile atra bile or melancholy and basically you've got rules for how you might kind of catch these so phlegm you'll get phlegm if you're if you're um, in cold damp areas then your phlegm will increase and that has an effect on your presence and the same with the other stats there it's just a really really thematic way of um of tying in these rules and introducing illness to the game so next up we've got smorgasbord this is one thing about liking mortborg is you get used to a lot of mork and borg puns so as well this is obviously forkborg well there's cyborg there's morkbol there's corkborg there's borkmorg there's pirate pirate borg there's loads of different ones so here we have smorgasbord so smorgasbord is literally a table of foods you roll 66 to see what you get which means you're favoring the kind of the middle ones which is the 20 ones which is your more generic food your more special food is on the other other outlines of this then we have Corkborg, rules for a pub. Uh, in fact, this book is just it's packed full of stuff, which it really isn't uncommon for uh, Mortborg fanzines. They really, really do get a lot of stuff in here. You've got magic items, you've got characters. So we've got the Poison Sommelier, uh, the one before, there we go, an unlicensed butcher. 
an awful cook and a cannibal prophet they all have the usual kind of starting treasure stats and then a random background and a random big, big ability uh, in fact the uh, cannibal here the cannibal um, prophet can be a harris specs now i know what this is from my warhammer 40,000 tyranid videos uh, and what this is is this someone who tells the future from entrails so how cool is that and then we have the starving pigman oh oh no the starving pigman is a monster and there's loads of monsters in this book. They're all really, really nicely laid out. Just quickly flick through there. You can buy the book if you really, really want all the details. I'm not here to stop you doing that. Gosh, there's loads. And then you get on to some special NPCs. And then some adventures. Now, the adventures are laid out very much like the um, the Rockback Sludges, which is the adventure that comes in Mortborg. There's one adventure here. There's then the prequel to the next adventure. And then... So there's two adventures, two full adventures, one middle adventure. And then at the back here, you've got a dungeon laid out as well, which is literally a one page adventure. So this is more Forkborg. It's just a fantastic example of, of some of the fanzines that you can get out there for Mortborg. So next up, we've got the cross stitch. This comes with a map of the main village of Sonderfall and also a little handout so that's kind of neat right from the off so this is an adventure it's pretty thorough for a mortborg adventure as you open it up you get a lot of explanation it's not expecting you just to kind of uh, work your way through here uh, although i think that is one of the cool things about a lot of the other mortborg stuff is in two lines it quite often it's quite evocative it really gets you thinking about the world as it's like but with very very little information this isn't the same is my point here because this one has to be more detailed because it's all about time travel um i don't want to spoil it because it really is the book is the one adventure but there's this time travel element that your um your dm will need to track looks at the whereabouts of the villages various various clues and they're all decided by tables as you can see here and i think this is really good potential for replaying this adventure so I would love going through this adventure with different parties, seeing how different characters react to uh, to what's going on. And I mean, I've done that with Chariot of the Gods for Alien RPG. That's uh, probably the adventure I've played the most. I've now played five times. So, uh, you know, it really is good fun to get a good adventure and just work through it. And then this can have extra bonus points because at the back we've got Welcome to Sonderfell. We've got our proper death metal logo style back cover there. So I've had to zoom the camera back for this one. This is the Masticator Gate. Uh, it's a really, really, really pretty book, this one. Um, I think it was available as a Kickstarter originally, and you can get it print on demand from uh, Drive Through RPG. It's also available as a PDF, but I really, really recommend the print version. I think it's absolutely lovely. Uh, it's basically it's three, ca uh, three adventures linked together to form a campaign. And it's pretty good at holding your hand through this one. Um, it doesn't quite, it doesn't lose that Morkborg feel, but it's definitely a lot clearer than some of the products that I've seen. As I say, three adventures linked together. The characters are free to go where they want to go. And so you could replay it again. Each campaign could be different. And it just dumps them straight in the action. Now, so straight away, you get attacked by an angry cow. But it's no ordinary angry cow. You use, there's this, the Endless Demon deck. So what this is, is it's a set of cards. You've got some head cards. You've got some body cards. And there's some leg cards hidden away in here somewhere. And what you do is you basically draw a card at random and put it on here and that creates your monster. So here we have a horned wretch and that gives it special rules in there. So every game you play with this is gonna be unique as you use the cards. And the campaign takes up the first 40 pages of the book. We've got some adventures here. Page three, you can see it's beautifully illustrated, but as I say, the text is nice and clear, which is good. And then we get to a new character class who's purpose built for this adventure, but you could probably use in other adventures if you wanted to. Uh, the Gate Spawn Cherub. And then we get to the monsters. So there's about 18 of them here. Loads of variety, fantastic art. And in true Mort Fork fashion, they only have a couple of lines to describe them all, but in the process, it tells you an awful lot about how to use them in the game. So here we have the wretched fledgling. So. You go the size of a toddler and ten times as hungry. Nests of wretched fledglings will, fledglings will devour whatever is offered to them without ill effect. 
So, that, I mean, that's all it says. But you, you immediately get an idea of what this creature is like. When you kill it, you can get the, uh, the contents of its guts, which can even include another wretched fledgling that will attack you. So, did, you know, some cool little creatures there. I've got a whole range of magic items. There's no plus one swords here. And then we go on to more demons. Now, again, these use the Endless Demon deck to customise them. Uh, the way they appear, there's quite a few of them. The way they appear after the monsters makes me think maybe these were stretch goals or something from the Kickstarter. I'm honestly not sure I didn't support the Kickstarter. And then I believe we get to the end of the book. Yeah, there you go. There's a player map that you can use to track the campaign. So... All in all, there's three adventures making a campaign, a new character class, 30 monsters and 10 items. And you could use everything in there in other adventures. And even if like, this is my confession to this, I've not actually played it yet, but I think it's a beautiful book. And like a lot of more board products, it looks absolutely fantastic on the shelf. So our last game is Nobunaga's Black Castle. Um, it's one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen. Uh, Mortborg is all of the games I've seen are full of fantastic artwork that really tie in with the rules. And Nobunaga's just really, really runs with it. Let's just take a look. There you go. Here's the weapons uh, tied in there. There's, there we go. You can just see it's absolutely beautiful, this book is. Um, there's just, uh, well, it's Samurai, which I absolutely love, but there's uh, there's a couple of teeny issues with this one. Uh, firstly, it was Kickstarter, which I missed. Uh, fortunately, I was able to order my copy through Amazon Japan. Uh, it can also be ordered through their website, which is also Japanese. Um, so I actually had to set up my own J Amazon Japan account to be able to order it. Uh, once I actually worked out how to do that, it was then quite easy to get uh, to order and it arrived fairly quickly too. So, you know, if you want one, Amazon Japan or their website to a good way of doing it. Uh, the second issue is it's all in Japanese, which is great and very understandable. However, you do need to be able to read kanji, and I cannot. Uh, but fortunately, my little friend Google Translate can. He might be a little temperamental, but he's given me a good idea of what's going on. The deal is, Lord Nob Nobunaga, who is a real Japanese warlord in the 16th century, uh, rather than die, uh, as he did in real life, instead he becomes a demon lord. And you play fallen samurai who are out for revenge. So you have to gain 108 honour, and then you can take on Nobunaga in a sort of final battle. So the rules are largely the same as Mort Borg, which is good because that gives you a fighting chance of being able to use Google Translate and work out what they are. So we've got the weapons here. Then we have armour, rules for armour, which works the same. Uh, we have magic. Uh, you can't see it here, but uh, these vary from summoning guardian spirits. Uh, so you can have fists of fire. Uh, you can even return someone from the dead. The more expensive powers cost you honour, though. So you're trying to build up 108 honour to get into the big fight. But as you bring people back from the dead, you're going to take yourself down again. And then when you fly, when you get to 108 honour, which I was hoping is one of these pages, you uh, you fly back to June the 1st, Tenshu the 10th, where you go to... Oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I apologize so much for what I am about to do is the language. So you go to Hanaji and you hold back Sangu and confront Nobunaga directly. Now, in this game, omens are replaced by karma, but they basically work the same. Illusions replace the Psalms. When all of the illusions have gone, let's see if we can find that page, keep it on track. Here's our illusions. So again, you're rolling a D66 on this one. And then when you get to 7-7, seven, seven, you burn this book the same as you do with Mort Borg. There's six different characters. There's the Maga Ritten Ridden Samurai. There's the Mutated Oni Ninja. There's the Outrage Swordmaster. The Rebellious Gunman. The Corrupt Court Noble. And then the Bataran of the Evil Sect. So a Bataran, I understand, is a Portuguese priest, uh, which I think I remember from the TV series Shogun <laughs> from back in the day. And then you come to Monsters. So we've got an Ashigaru Phalanx there. A giant human centipede. A headless samurai woman. 
uh, Kappa Suiken, I think. Uh, so these are little um, spirits that have water in their heads. And if you if you knock them and they lose the water at the top of their heads, then um, then they, they die. Uh, there's a now I've seen two translations of this, which is either demon or ogre. Uh, so I think that might be Oni that that is. And this, this is a black dragon, although bizarrely it translates as war elephant as well. <laughs> so I don't know what goes through Google's Translate, but it's a much better chance than I have of understanding any of this. Um, there's a black brown head. This is the master of the tea ceremony. A red mother robed skull samurai. A ghost warrior and a bold rat warlord and then your final your big bad guy uh the six heavenly demon king nobunaga uh, he has 108 hit points so he's going to take some beating so then we have some adventures this is sort of just guiding you up a hill to the final fight basically i don't know, if I, I don't know how clear it is on these characters it's not right okay so <laughs> each um um what it must be this is honor that you gain for when you um when you defeat these creatures so that's how you get your honor to get to your 108 and we come through we've got our adventures at the back and then basically we run out of book and um, yeah as i say i absolutely love this one <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. So that concludes my look at five Mortborg products. And if you like more of that type of thing, then please shout up and I'll look at doing another five. I've got plenty of them. And if you like those five, well, I'll go and buy myself another five. Uh, in fact, I've got some of the bigger games on their way as well. I've got Vast Grim, which is Mortborg in space. Specifically, it seems to be Mortborg in a space that's not dissimilar to the dark kind of dark grim future of Warhammer 40,000. Farewell to Arms, which is a sort of weird war. And then Ronin, which I'm, I'm basically hoping is the English version of uh, Nobunaga's Castle. So I'll be doing some more videos of those anyway when they arrive. So thank you very much for listening. Please subscribe for more kind of general geekery as I uh, work my way through the collection. Cheers.